The Pythagorean theorem works like this. This is one of the few formulas in middle school, or I guess, I, it really is one of the few. There's not a lot. I, I don't know. To me, it feels like there's surprisingly few things we need to memorize as middle schoolers. But then maybe it's because I already have them all memorized, so it seems easy. But you need to learn uh, a formula. Is there another way of solving it? I'm just trying to figure out. I don't. I, don't, I guess I'll just do this mini lesson on the Pythagorean theorem, and then if it, if there's another way, I'll regret that I made this video confusing. But for now, I'm gonna assume we need to learn it. So that is called the. And let's take some notes. Pythagorean theorem. You know, a part of me wants to say the Pythagorean theorem. Is a sixth grade standard. So maybe some of you are familiar with it before. I don't know. I haven't actually taught sixth grade math. I've only ever taught seventh and eighth grade. Okay, Pythagorean theorem. Let's do a review slash a first time learning it, just in case. Pythagorean theorem, um, you know, in its simplest form, looks like this a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay? That sounds pretty easy to memorize. In fact, anytime you see the Pythagorean theorem, you know how I'm always saying, like, you can write any variable. You technically can. Like, I guess this formula would, would still work if I wrote, like, x, y, and z. But 99% of the time, when you're talking about the Pythagorean theorem, which was, I think I heard from my own math teacher, invented by a guy named Pythagoras, or Pythagoras, maybe, from ancient, I want to say Greece. And uh, he noticed, as he was measuring out triangles, specifically right triangles, he noticed a pattern. Okay, and I'm going to teach you that pattern right now. So the pattern goes like this. Let We'll do a couple, we'll do two examples, just because I want to, you know, like, prove it. Let me make this a little easier for myself. Okay, and I'll do that one right triangle, and we'll do, you know, this other right triangle. Okay, so he noticed as he was examining right triangles, and I want to point out that this, this formula only works for right triangles. Right triangles is a triangle with a right angle. Now, not every triangle is a right angle, right? Like, like if I drew a triangle, you know... Like this triangle that I just drew probably is not a right triangle. If we if we measured these out, and I don't think I have the ability to easily do that, oops, in this program. But like, let's say this is 60 degrees. Like a really common thing is like an an equilateral triangle. You know, like where everything is 60 degrees. That's not a right triangle because there's no right angle. Okay, so Pythagorean theorem does not work for that. Okay, another triangle it wouldn't work for is like, you know, uh, do do do. There we go. This triangle, which, you know, let's say this one is like 110 and 35 and 35. This is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles because it has two sides that are the same uh, measurement and a third side. Uh, but it, this formula also won't work for that. Okay, Pythagorean theorem is strictly for right triangles. So that means strictly for triangles that include a right angle. Let's get rid of these. No. We don't need these non-right triangles in my way. Okay. So, wow. I am surprised that this turned into a Pythagorean theorem lesson. Which maybe means I should look over these practice pages before I start my VR lesson. Hmm, is there a lesson here? <laughs> well, let's talk about this. Pythagorean theorem. Okay, what is A, B, and C? A, B, and C, in this case, is the length of the sides of the triangle. Okay, so A is one side, you know, one side, B is another side, and C is a third side. And you might be thinking, 
Well, can I just throw the letters anywhere I want? A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C? No, because one of them is special, and that is C. C is the hypotenuse, okay? Which, luckily, I've been pushing all video. So you know by now that the hypotenuse, C, is the longest side, okay? Notice uh, there's a pattern here. The longest side doot, doot, is always, you know, across from the right angle itself in a right triangle. So remember, let's, let's make sure we, we really make a note of that. Only for right triangles. This, this formula, this amazing, cool formula that you have to memorize, unfortunately, uh, the Pythagorean theorem, it's only for right triangles. So start memorizing. Maybe watch this video a bunch of times. Uh, the hypotenuse is C. Okay, so in this case, in this triangle, this side is C, the hypotenuse, right? Now, which side is A? Oh, sorry. And in this triangle, you know, this side being the longest side and the one across from the right, right angle, that side is C. So which one is A and which one is B? Like, looking just at this one triangle here. A and B is, it doesn't matter. You can just pick a side. It, I, I can call this one A and this one B, or I can do the same math with this one being A and this one being B. That doesn't matter. They're, they're interchangeable. And you can even see, like, you could call this, like, B squared plus A squared and be the same thing. So let's solve this out, okay? A plus B. In the context of the Pythagorean theorem, it allows us to solve for a missing side. So in this case, I mean, we can count because I, all right, yeah, because I did this on a, on a graph paper. This side is three, right? From one, two, three. So this one has a, has a height of three, this triangle. And this triangle over here has a base, you know, length of one, two, three, four. Okay, three and four. So if I, if I gave you this, this triangle and I was like, hey, I know that one side is three and one side is four. It's a right triangle. What's the missing hypotenuse? What's the missing third side? You could do this math. You could say, well, you know, I know that a squared, so three squared plus b squared, which is four squared, is going to equal c squared. Okay, it's going to equal this missing side squared. And then you would have to do math. Uh, if you don't remember what squaring something is, when you square something, you're multiplying the number times itself. So, you know, this 3 squared is the same thing as saying 3 times 3. Okay? We're adding this plus 4 squared, which is the same thing as saying, you know, 4... 4 times 4, and that's going to equal c squared, okay? And then let's, I guess, do the work over here, because I ran out of room, even though I'm in an infinite void. Uh, rewriting it again, so 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, right? What is, what is that actually? It's saying 3 times 3. That's what 3 squared is. It's just the number times itself. Plus 4 squared. 4 times 4. Okay. It's going to equal C squared. And what is 3 times 3? It's 9. 9 plus 4 times 4 is 16. Which equals C squared. 9 plus 16 is 25 equals c squared. And again, many students I have in my career is this, think the answer is 25, but it's not. 25 is the, the hypotenuse's length, c squared. So the question is, you know, what number, what number c, when I square it, would equal 25? And those of you who know your times tables will know the answer is 5, right? Because 
you know, 5 times 5 equals 25, or another way of saying that is 5 squared equals 25. Mathematically, though, you have to know a new symbol, which is the square root. You would just say, well, let's square root this side. If I square root this side, I have to square root this side. And what am I left with? What's the square root of 25? What? Which is just saying, what number squared equals 25? 5 equals the square root of a square, which is just c. Okay, so 5 equals c. So looking back at here, um, my missing side, c, is 5. Okay, and I will now prove it. No, I won't prove it. I mean, I could, and I could do it in a cool VR way. Watch this. I'm going to make a shape that is one square, one, one length. I don't know. These are like inches or centimeters. It doesn't really matter. So check this out. Oops. Can I do this in a cool way? See how this? I'm going to measure it. So watch. From here, it's one, two, three, four. And then looking up, it's one, two, three. And let's let's prove that the the this thing is five. One, at least really carefully. Two. Okay, let, let's do it in an easier way. Come here. One, and then I'll just. Oh, can I clone this? Oh, I can clone it. Okay, look. Ha! VR is cool. Watch this. One. One. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Three. And let's double check to c equal 5 as our Pythagorean theorem, as our math says. 1, 2, oops, 2, 3, 4, 5. Dang, look at that! That's pretty cool. That's, that's some good, good mathing. And in fact, let's do it the opposite way. Now that I have invented a, you know, an like inch thing or a, a line measurement, sort of, it's almost exactly a line. Let's look at this triangle down here. So this triangle, we can see its length is one, two, three, four, and its height is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so <laughs> I don't want to take off this brush, so I'm going to write it using the brush. Uh, look, this thing is five, and this thing over here this thing is four. Okay, and what's the hypotenuse? What's the, the longest side? Well, I'm going to solve it mathematically. But first, let's estimate just by using this thing. I think the answer will be around one, two. Mine's not like a perfect measurement, so it might be close. Three, four, oops, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I hope the answer is close to seven, because otherwise I just confused a bunch of kids for no reason. Let's solve it out mathematically! Like this. Okay. Uh, and again, this is our formula. Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This side we'll call A. This side we'll call B. And this side we know is C. So let's write it out. If I just back you up. And, no, I mean, we'll just let's do it over, do it that way, this way. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I'll use, I mean, I'll just keep using red, why not? So, let's, let's remember everything. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And our A in the problem is 4. So 4 squared plus b squared is 5 equals c squared. And what, is, what does squaring something mean? It means multiplying the number times itself. So 4 times 4. What, what is this thing? Times 4 plus 
5 times 5 equals c squared. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 25, 5 times 5 is 25, which we actually saw in the last problem, by the way, equals c squared. 16 plus 25 is... Um, 30, 41, which will equal c squared. What? Did I do that wrong? Nope, that looks right. Cool, that seems right. And then, How do I find c squared? Well, 41 is unfortunately not an easy thing to square root. So, I mean, really, you square root both of them. And the answer is, you know, c equals the square root of 41, which is not 7, because the square root of 7 is 49, which means I got kind of close. And is the lesson here? that I should make less crude measurement devices than this plainly wrong-sized red strip. Maybe that's the lesson here. Or maybe this is why you should always solve that out mathematically now that you've learned the Pythagorean theorem. So in this case, C, this one side, the answer is actually the square root of 41. That's the length of this side. And, I mean, what do we know about that? We know it's going to be more than 6 and less than 7, right? Because the square root of 36 is 6, and then there's like, you reach, you like hit the square root of 41 sometime in between 6 and the square root of 49, which is 7. So all I can tell you about this number, because I'm not a robot, is that the square root of 41 is you know, more than six and less than seven, six point something. And that is the length of that missing side. And I really hope I didn't mess up the math on that because that would ruin this entire video. But off the top of my head, that makes sense. I followed the formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 16 plus 25 equals c squared. Did I do 16 plus 25 correctly? 30, 41, no, that's right, okay, all right. Well, that is the Pythagorean Theorem. So basically, we use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the hypotenuse uh, very frequently. Although you could actually do it the other way, right? You could you could have any two sides. If I, Even if I just had A and C, I could find B by using the Pythagorean Theorem um, just by solving it out. But you got to memorize this. Welcome to middle school. Honestly, 